Okay. We should be good. Yes. We should be good. Now, do I pronounce Hello. your name Lyrics? Oh, um, it's actually Lyrics. Lyrics. No, it's lo- it's Lorex. <laughs> Everybody get that's like a meme. Get everyone. Okay. Um, perfect. Well, nice to meet you. I appreciate you reaching me out. Uh, reaching out. I know it's kind of weird when people make uh, content about you, and then I always appreciate it when people slide into the DM. So I appreciate that. Yeah, it's normal for this side, at least um, internet I interact with. So it's it's normal. But um, all right. So start this off. I guess if you're fine with me taking taking initiative. So yeah. I saw your coverage. On my video and just want to have a conversation about it because you, mm-hmm. you and uh you seem to be very confident and uh condescending when talking about this topic sure. even bragging about how much uh research you've done into this so mm-hmm. i'm looking forward to seeing where that confidence is from and uh so just getting right into it cool yeah yeah tell me what's on your mind because i i think we agree actually a lot i think we just came from different perspectives probably so do you know what i do as a youtuber um yeah you're like a commentary channel it covers like a lot of like more on the f- psychology or philosophy side of things i guess philosophy not psychology but philosophy side of things so when i'm c- making commentary i don't know where other people are coming from but i'm always trying to figure out like the most nuance the most like what's probably happening versus what the what the audience thinks is happening and then of course we don't know because like we're not reading any of these people's minds um so I'm interested, are, are we, are you going to like talk to me about the situation or are we talking about our different ideas about the situation or kind of both? Both. Okay, cool. Okay, go ahead. Do you want to start then with maybe what we maybe agreed or disagreed on? I don't know how you want the conversation to flow. Yeah, no, it's all good. I got it. Um, so at seven minutes in your video, you say, we have no evidence that Katie is manipulative, malicious, or a liar, but it's interesting that everyone runs with that. Mm-hmm. Does anyone have any actual evidence that she did that? And yeah, we do, which okay. um, you you actually did react to that evidence in the same video that I covered. So um, you may have missed it or not. I don't know. But the reason why I say Katie is manipulative, malicious, and a liar is because she lied about George being the one who pressured her to drink alcohol and play drinking games to get her vulnerable when text proof came out showing it was her and her friends who asked to play. She lied about being freshly 18 and then got called out on that she was actually six months into being 18. And then she lied again to cover her last one, saying it was a typo in her script, even though she said it multiple times in her stream. And lastly, she lied about George touching her out of nowhere and that she could barely move or breathe, completely leaving out the context they cuddled and spooned for over an hour beforehand, which after being called out, she then conceded completely admitting to that. So I call Katie manipulative, malicious, and a liar because she manipulated and provably lied about information to make George seem more of a predator than he actually is in her allegation. So it would be received better to the public, which by mm-hmm. the definition that shows she acted in malice by making George seem more guilty and a worse person than he is. I definitely see that perspective. And I think that she corrected herself a few times with any of the misinformation. But I think there's also a question of do they perceive the information the same? So that's where my brain has to ask people, have you ever been in the situation where like you both see something and then you have different opinions about the thing that you saw? Sometimes I wonder how much of that is playing a role. I agree that there were some uh, absolute miscommunications and you could call them a lie. And I think that's where I want to be careful is like, was it a lie or was it a miscommunication? Now, I do agree with you that in some areas I could definitely see the evidence for a lie, but I personally don't feel comfortable making like a definitive it was on purpose. She 4D chess this. She absolutely planned this. Like that kind of a feeling. Is that kind of the feeling you have though? Like you think Katie was like sitting there twirling a mustache and being like, I'm going to make this, like, I'm going to ruin well, here's George. The thi- well, here, mm-hmm. well, here's the thing. There's manipulations and there's lies in this situation. Okay. And, yeah. I, I mean, sorry, sorry. Miscommunications. Okay, okay. There's miscommunications and lies in this situation. I only mentioned the lies, um, a few of them. There's a lot of miscommunications, which is basically this whole situation you could call a miscommunication. Sure, but sure. But on top of it, Katie did lie. Outright. Yeah. So the Clearly lying, provable. just to, so the one lying I would agree with is definitely like the who initiated the drinking games thing. Like that, I would say is like a lie or I don't know if like I'm trying to be too good faith here, but I could, I could be okay with that being a lie because obviously there's text proof, right? So that would be definitely one I would agree with you on. The freshly 18 thing, I think we're just going to disagree on this in in terms of language. I think what freshly 18 is meant to imply is that her naivety is there. She's young and inexperienced, which I think all 18 year year olds are. So I think it is a matter if you're freshly 18 or almost 19, I would still put you in that category. Do you do you have a different version of freshly 18 being something else? So the problem here, the problem is, is that she said she was freshly 18. People called her out, said, no, you're actually six months and 18. 
And then in her final thoughts, she clarified and said, oh, it's just a typo in my script. But I think she forgot that she said it multiple times in that stream. I know you didn't get to this part of my video because you <laughs> clicked right. off it because I don't know, you're frustrated. Yeah. But there was proof of her saying it multiple times in that stream. And it wasn't just that she meant to say, I freshly graduated high school. She meant to say freshly 18 and then made up another lie to cover it. I could play that part if you've missed it. Yeah. Okay. So here's how my brain works when I'm seeing people. I know people misspeak all the time and I know people aren't as smart as they think they are. So they're also not as Machiavellian as they think they are. They're not as malicious as people think they are. So in my mind, when I see somebody fumbling, especially as a streamer who's been doing this for so long, you fumble over words, you say the wrong things, you make mistakes. I do it now and I'm 35 and I've been streaming a long time. Like I do it now. So I'm trying to look at Katie as somebody who feels under pressure, who's someone who's who's very like nervous, who's saying things. And I agree with you that she either misspoke or was too embarrassed or something changed. But a part of me thinks there's too many reasonable reasons that could have happened. So my brain goes to, okay, she's either malicious, but keep in mind too, and maybe this is part of the miscommunication. I think she's a girl who genuinely feels like she was essayed. Whether or not she will agree to that in five years, maybe not. But I think for the person she is now, she believes that. So everything she's saying, no matter how sloppy it is, I think she is trying to make it seem as clear as possible that George is a predator, even though you and I don't agree that he is, right? I, you, right? You don't agree George is a predator. Of course not. Okay. And I don't agree he's a predator either, right? I mean, three full videos, like fully going over this. This was my fourth, I think, video on it. And so like for me, I obviously don't think George is a predator. But if I'm Katie and I'm in that situation and I'm 19 and I don't know better and I spent three years of my high school at home because of COVID, then maybe I'm telling a story that sounds, quote, worse than it is because people won't believe like it's as bad as it felt because like I you do you know what I'm trying to say like I'm not trying to say she didn't lie I'm trying to say did she lie with intention or did she fumble over her words because for me like lying is a very specific so she fumbled thing. over her words so she fumbled so in your way of things she fumbled over her words and then noticed oh fuck I fucked up and now everyone thinks I'm malicious and then made up another lie to cover that up because what was, it's undoubtedly true that can I can I uh can, would you appreciate me. if I could just play the clip sure 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 because I don't know if you're familiar with it go ahead go ahead right, let me share my screen um because this was in the last part of my video so let yeah, me yeah. get this pulled up oh apparently click on it all right Let's see would it be right here because you allowed George to be the one to point out this inconsistency what I meant to say was I was 18 and all right here we go go ahead when in reality I script that was supposed to say freshly out of high school also the fact that i said i was freshly 18 which is something a lot of people are mad about when in reality i was 18 and five months old my bad uh what i meant to say in that original stream where i said i was freshly 18 i said i was freshly 18 and just out of high school what i meant to say was i was 18 and freshly out of high school i just put it in front of the wrong thing this excuse would work so she says i just put it in the wrong thing but then there's more evidence showing that she said it multiple times in this stream right here Flimsy excuse but it would have at least worked here but you can't use that reason for the second time you said it they knew that I was freshly 18 and they also knew I was very drunk. There's no mention of high school. So that's the second time she said it. So her excuse of saying that she just misplaced it so that the sentence would flow as I freshly graduated high school is a complete lie because she said it multiple times proving that she was just making up an excuse. Yeah, it's interesting. I would say the way that I would read that situation and because I saw her original video, right? I did. And I and I know I skipped the end of yours. Um, I would say that the, this is how my brain would read that. I would read that as, okay, she means the same thing. I think she thinks it's bad either way. It's bad that she's freshly 18. It's bad that she's freshly out of high school. And now she wants to reword it in a way that makes sense to people, but obviously could mean both or either. Do you think Katie cares whether it was freshly 18 or freshly out of high school? No. Okay. I don't either. No. So I but think regardless, she's... like, like the, I guess, uh, I don't know. I feel like it's pretty black and white. The problem is, is that she said one thing and then lied to cover up. She said mm. freshly 18 and then lied to cover it up and said, oh, I actually just meant to say freshly graduated high school. And that was just an outright lie. She said it multiple times. It's like it's that black and white, you know? Yeah, I, I don't think... know what the miscommunication is. Well, th that's the dilemma, right? So I think I. 
I could see that perspective, but the dilemma is that it's not the only perspective. So it's not as black and white as it seems. Like humans don't work that way. We're not good at communication. We're not good at things. So I agree with you that she she seems like she's mistelling the truth or rewording the script. But also to me, she just seems like she's not good at communication and she's fucking up multiple times, which I think we agree she's bad at communication right Wait, like, what do you think she messed up the communication of i think when she corrected herself i'm not sure why she did that because she could have just because i think she probably this is me reading her mind which is not something we should do but i do oh, think no. she, i know she probably doesn't think either is bad but she probably thinks the audience is going to read it that way so she's trying to defend herself and when you come to be defensive you're going to end up trying to say things to communicate better, but it sounds worse. So, so whether she said it under distress or not, it's still a lie. Like, I, I can see where you're getting at. Yeah. She said it under distress to try to defend herself. Regardless, she's still culpable for lying about George. I think, well, she's culpable for anything that was a lie that she knows is a lie. I agree with you. She did know this was a lie. That, which She did part? know this was a lie. The this, what is the, the freshly this? freshly 18 thing. She said it was just a typo in her script. That is a provable lie. That's what I just proved. Okay, hold on. Let me think about this. Is it, yeah, my brain is like, and again, this is like, this is why my channel is like a philosophy channel. Cause we're like, what do you, what does this mean? What is a, what does this mean when people say this? I'm okay with, with it being obviously possibly a lie for sure. 1000%, right? I just don't know if it was internally a lie, but if it would help, I can concede and say that I could see why this could be considered a lie. I'm just, I couldn't gun to my head if they're like, what's Katie lying? Like, I wouldn't know how to answer that question personally. So I'm not sure it's a lie in that sense, but if it helps move the conversation forward, we can do that. The problem is, like, again, I can't read her mind. So I can say the implications of it. What would be a lie, in your opinion, from Katie? Um, Let's say she didn't think George essayed her. Like, she did not think that. That was not even anything in her mind at all, ever. Not convinced after, not, you know, talked to, blah, blah, blah. And then she was like, okay, I'm going to say he touched me so I can get clout and views. And she orchestrates a plan to tell a lie about him that would be a lie I think intentionality matters a lot to me personally so I would say that if she like you know if I found out oh my god like this was a 4d chess plan she knew he didn't do that she never even perceived it that way even because you know people perceive things differently Wait, every okay mm -hmm. yeah yeah sorry I understand so yeah. you first said you like I guess don't want to be too fucking debate brand right here, but you first yeah. conceded saying that she did lie about the text messages. So we already have a proven yeah. liar in our hands. Well, everybody, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Thing. Do we agree What's that up? everybody lies in what in certain ways? That's completely besides the point. We're talking about this situation. She lied in this situation. Oh, okay. Of course, everyone is a liar in other aspects. Okay, of hold what, on. You know? This is the difference between my work and other people's work. My work is to talk about the philosophy of the consciousness. So if humans are liars, and even though we all pick and choose how we lie, like I think in survival lying, it's good. I don't think lying is good generally. But if you're in a survival situation, it makes sense. So I'm looking at Katie in a survival situation, right? So once a liar, not always a liar, but everybody lies. So I can't debate brain, like I can't debate you on Katie specifically because when I review people on stream, I'm never talking about them. I'm talking about them to learn about us. So my, okay. that's what my work is. My work is not meant to like. It just seems like you're like dismissing a lot though. I, it, I know it comes it, across as that way. It, 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 it should, because if I was doing what you guys were doing, if I was in your work, then yes, I would be like, oh, Brittany's not like engaging in what we're doing but that I'm not doing the same thing. So I think sometimes people review my work and think I'm just a commentary channel, but I'm actually like reviewing them to talk about us. So my audience goes, man, have I been Katie before? Have I been a George? Like I've been falsely accused. I went to court for it. It was incredibly anxiety inducing. It was like the most like intense moment of my life. It was so exhausting. And now I never talk about that person, never bring them up. I don't have to go to court ever again about it. But it was horrifying. I cried. I was desperate. I went home to my parents. It was horrible. Um, now I'm lucky it didn't destroy my life because I had a support system and stuff like that. I can go to therapy and stuff. But 
it is a horrible situation, but like I know ultimately that like my stalker is just a very sick person and that like they did what they thought was right because that's what stalkers do. But like they're not, they're just very sick, right? Like that's what it is. So my work is about understanding humans and why they do what they do instead of thinking it's okay. black and white. So does that kind of help? I'm really not trying to like. Yeah, to get, to get yeah. no, no, that's good. But to get like the brass tacks here. Tell me. So basically that you said you're fine with admitting that she did lie with the text messages. Yes. And you're saying there's enough evidence for you to understand the perspective of her being freshly 18. Yes. I showed there was clear cut. And now you also have a girl who completely omitted the fact that they were cuddling and spooning in her yes. first allegation to make George seem more predatory than she actually, than he actually is. For sure. She said, quote, that he touched her out of nowhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that is that not a complete another lie? Could be. Explore this with me. Um, and again, I've done a lot in my life. I've lived a lot of lives. So for my from my in my cultural view, cuddling is inherently sexual. Is cuddling inherently sexual to you? I don't know your perspective. Um, I don't know if I don't know if I want to go down the cuddling route. I mean, they, they she admitted that she would spoon with him too. What about I think spooning? to act as if two adults who are the opposite sex who are cuddling and spooning for over an hour after mm -hmm. just two days of knowing each other at night sure. at some VidCon after party thing. I mean, to act as if there wasn't some kind of flirtatious context going on here would sure, sure, I sure. Think be dishonest. No, no, I agree with you. There is the possibility of flirtatiousness. Does the flirtatiousness <laughs> al allow for the uh, ramping up, right? So where does your line personally draw? Because like, imagine you're Katie, you're on the couch, you've just cuddled. And everything seems pretty normal. And she also said they were group cuddling. A lot of people can, like said that too. They were group cuddling on the couch. That's very normal. I've group cuddled with my friends. I've slept in the same bed as my friends. I've done camping trips with my friends. That all seems like pretty is normal. It normal to, is it normal to group cuddle someone you've known for two nights who's the opposite sex that you're attracted to? It depends on the cultural bubble. Um, if you're sex positive, sure. If you're like an atheist, sex probably. Positive. Well, if you're an atheist, probably, right? Like what's wrong with like spooning, right? Is there anything inherently bad about it? There's nothing wrong, but right. that does give the context that they are interested in each other. You're Maybe. Spooning. It depends. Well, I've spooned people I am not interested in, right? People have spooned me I'm not interested this in. This has got to be like five. This has got to be a very low percent of humanity. Well, that's the thing right we're now. talking about. I think we are talking I about. I that's Katie. Well, we are talking about a very unique part of society, right? Streamers, successful. They're one percenters. They are not normal society. They are kids who were stuck during COVID in their high school years. They're kids who are chronically online. They're not normal kids. And allegedly, some of them are neurodivergent. They're especially, I know, I know, uh, uh, what's his name? Dream. George. Dream especially Dream. is neurodivergent. But like, that's what I mean. I don't think we're talking about average kids. I think we're talking about a very select group of inexperienced, naive, socially awkward people who don't know exactly what the rules are. I mean, I hear what you're saying for other contexts, but I feel like you have to reach such a high bar of evidence to dismiss that they were cuddling and spooning to say this isn't inherently flirtatious. Like we're talking on a crazy odds right now. Well, you know, you know based off how they both told the stories, I'm not sure because George said, right, that he, it was it was comfortable and he thought it was OK, but he never even did he use the word sexual? I think he used the word like comfortable. Like I thought no. everything was OK, right? So I'm thinking maybe even he was thinking like, oh, I don't know what might happen tonight. And the fact that he didn't even ask her back to his hotel room after the elevator moment told me that maybe even he wasn't thinking sexual. Maybe he was thinking, I don't even know if George has sex. Do we even know if George is sexually active? Like, we don't know anything about these people. <laughs> okay. Like, um, I don't know. So let me let me tell you. Imagine you're Katie. You're, you're spooning a person and maybe it feels comfortable. And after an hour, all of a sudden, his hand is on whatever. That might feel out of the blue, but to George might feel like it makes sense. I think these two people miscommunicated and it set each other off. I don't think George intended to go over the boundary and I don't think Katie is telling a lie, but I do think that in five or so years, she might have a different perspective on what happened, right? I think she might end up, you know, and I hope she does come to this different perspective that, okay, this was maybe that wasn't his intention, that maybe I just didn't understand the social situation. And same for George, which I think he admitted, right? He said he he obviously feels like something like went wrong. And yeah, it's just, it happens, right? Like adulting is accepting that things will go wrong. The question is, are these people bad actors? Are they intentionally malicious? Are they evil, right? And 
in a philosophy sense, like are they intending malice on people? And I think that's what I'm more interested in. So do you think like Ju- like Katie is that's intending? That's been proven though. What does that mean? What do you mean by that? When you lie about someone to make them seem more predatory than they actually are, that's malice. You're making them seem more guilty than the way they are, more predatory than they are. You're doing that maliciously. That's what the definition is. You know, I was thinking about this. I didn't like that Katie kept trying to read George's mind. Like she kept trying to put a lot of maliciousness on him. Like he he targeted me. He did it in front of a group of people to make fun of me. He, you know, she put a lot of like negative spin on his actions. And though I could see that being a possibility, I think if we're being honest, like George doesn't seem like that kind of person. And I don't think Katie, I don't know anything about her any more than George, right? These are new people to me. This was the first time I ever heard about them. So I'm coming in totally like just neutral, right? I don't know who these people are. So when I see both Katie and George, I see both awkward people who might not know what they're talking about or doing. And so I don't, I didn't like that Katie put all that maliciousness on George, but I'm not sure that she couldn't do that. Like, okay, hear me out. I know this sounds I feel like we're getting a little, I feel like yeah. we're getting a little in the weeds. Well, don't that's the problem so? is like when I review content, I am, this is my perspective of my work. So I'm not here to say like Katie lied. Like I don't have evidence that Katie maliciously lied. I have evidence that Katie lied about this and this, but why would she lie about those things? Did she think it just sounded good? Wait, you don't have evidence. We don't have evidence, evidence that she maliciously lied. Like, so you disagree that she purposely made George seem more predatory so her allegation goes down better to the audience. You disagree oh, with that? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I could agree with that, but I'm, I think she did that. Oh. No, no, I agree that she, because this is um from a branding perspective, if she thinks he assaulted her, which she does from our understanding, then she wants to make it as clear to the audience as possible that this is a bad person. So she'll play up and be hyperbolic about the way that it impacted her. Everyone does this when they tell stories. It's like an exaggeration to the push the point across. There's, there's playing up and exaggerating and yeah. there's lying. And she's lied. She said it was them who tried to make her vulnerable by offering her drinks. And that's just a lie. That that's sh- just one of them. Right. For sure. And I think, you, <laughs> I, I mean, I agree with you. I'm saying I can see why all of those things could be true at the same time. So I can't write her off completely, but I could say she, we agree Katie's in the wrong here. Yeah. Like we agree with that. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, of course. Okay. Then we agree with that. So now, you know, you and I agree false accusations are bad. Katie is in the wrong. George is innocent. We agree to all those things. Yes. Okay. So then once we agree to that foundation, now my work goes, why would Katie do this? And like, is it because she's malicious? Kind of like a court and a jury. Right. Like, I don't want to I don't want a system. I don't want the mob going after 19 year olds because they feel offended. (laughs) I want to know why we're going after 19 year olds who might have made a mistake. And if they didn't just make a mistake, how do we hold them accountable through values that are their own or societies? Because these are these are very complicated issues, right? I'm sorry. I'm having difficulty understanding like your position. I feel like I say something you say I agree, but then you disagree right after. I'm I we're, feel like we're having a complete yeah, yeah, communication yeah. here somewhere. I think most people do things because they think it's right. And the deviation yeah. comes. She thought she was right. She th- yeah, she yes. thought she was right. Yes. And she thought she was doing a right thing. Yes. But regardless, doesn't mean she can't be held accountable and culpable for this. I agree with you. Now. She can <laughs> think she's doing something right, but still lie along the way. Yes. Make George seem more predatory and she should be held accountable for that. Yes. Now, how do you want her to be held accountable? I don't. That's not interesting to me. I don't, okay. I don't know. So that's the part. I don't think the consequences are that interesting. Okay. What do you think is interesting then? Well, like trying to explain the but disagreement in our perspective. Well, like is the consequence that interesting? What? She should lose her career and lose her channel. Like, I don't know what should happen to her. She should lose, l- l- uh, learn from her mistakes. I mean, she still is very young. She's sure, probably sure. going to learn from her mistakes. The problem is, is that she's just young and she had these mistakes online. A lot of these people make mistakes in the 90s or whatever, and it's just never broadcasted. Sure. They just have to, they don't have to deal with the public pushback because, she, because she's a, you know, public streamer. She's going to have to deal with a lot more pushback. And I agree with that too, right? And I, I it's hard to know who. But I mean, at she... the same time, she did put out a blatant false accusation accusing someone of a crime. Ooh, so it can't, she cannot. See, that's where we disagree. You can't put out a false accusation unless you know it's a lie. What? Well, because we agreed that she thinks she's... Okay, that's just semantic definition, though. We agree it's a false accusation. But it... Well, no. Well, I agree 
well, it depends on who you ask, which is the point of my work as well. Words are contextual to culture. They're not objective. So a false accusation is knowing they didn't do something to you and accusing them of it anyways. And Katie thinks she was assaulted. So she can't falsely accuse him. Okay. I don't know if this can be literally proven in a judge format to make her like seem guilty. But regardless, I think we're getting this is semantics. You know, I feel like we well, both how, understand what I'm saying, right? Well, no, because you're you we are disagreeing now. Now we are disagreeing because I you cannot falsely accuse of something someone of something you thought they did. Okay. Like she thinks she was assaulted. So she's saying I was assaulted. She's not okay. lying. She could think that way. Right. Yeah. But then then that's where I would come in and say, okay, girl, like if I could talk to Katie, I'd say, let's talk about how he might have by definition in certain cultures assaulted you, but didn't intend to because I think intention matters. Some people don't. I do think it matters because I think it's the difference between George who admitted to touching Katie, right? He didn't say how exactly, but he did say he touched her. And so there's something there, which I think he might have gone off physical. I think you even said in your video, correct me if I'm wrong, that like physical cues are important. Well, the world is changing to require verbal cues. And since they didn't use verbal cues, they they will run are into they that. Are they really? Is the world really changing like that? Yeah. and oh, This is a very small minority of people. No, it's hugely changing and it should change in a way to mitigate consent violation, right? Because I'm assuming you don't want people getting violated, right? That's not the goal. The goal is no, to I communicate. Do. You, you, is that a joke? <laughs> okay, 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 it's a good joke. Okay, well, you never know, okay? I don't want to, like, tell you how to think. So the point is, is, like, in order to mitigate harm and to say, like, we want to communicate the best possible. So I agree. I've absolutely verbally communicated with people and it's gone okay. And then I've verbally communicated it's gone okay. I've written down our intentions. I've talked to friends and said I intend to sleep with this person. We're going to go have sex. We'll call if anything goes wrong. Like I've done a lot of safety checks with people. I don't know if you've practiced any of those safety checks yourself. Like, hey, do you want to have sex with me? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, and I don't mean for you to like tell the internet if you're sexually active or something. That's none of our business. But the point is, asexual. Oh, are is that a joke? <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're making yeah. a joke because Katie said she's asexual. I get it. Okay, so. The point is, is that what you are seeing as black and white, I'm seeing like as a cultural difference because I know the world is diverse. Like I'm pretty traveled. I've read lots of books. I've like talked to lots of people. I really wish the world all spoke a universal language, but it's pretty clear we don't. So I'm saying the reason I do the work I do is to point out the fact that we are not all saying the same things. And so I think a person who thinks something happened to them can't falsely accuse somebody of something they think happened to them. I just don't think... That's possible. But I, I I see that you think it's possible and I think there's something there. I think what we could do instead is tell people like Katie, people didn't intend to hurt you. And even though they did, and George apologized for that, and Dream did, which I thought was really, really good of them. Now that we've apologized, we need to learn that how we process information and communication will help mitigate this in the future. So in the future, Let's ask before we touch. Let's, you know, have a conversation if we're yeah, having yeah. problem reading body language, right? So I think we mostly agree. I think our only disagreement is maybe on the, maybe like, can she falsely accuse someone if she doesn't know, right? Is that the only place we disagree probably? Um, I'm I'm not sure, but I don't really want to clarify because I feel like it's getting really weird. So if I could just, <laughs> you know, bring a little back, back on okay. trail. Okay, okay. Um, so we've talked about the line. Um, you've gave your opinion about that. I brought up the lies by omission, especially of cuddling sure. and spooning. The fact that she only mentioned those details after her hand was forced by George when he called those out. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. This girl seems very suspicious in the way she's going about this. But regardless, we can move on from that. Sure. I think by definition that shows she acted in malice because there's provable lies that sh she knows. But we can move on. So um, at 158, 15 seconds in your uh, response video, though, you said, there was misinformation in my video and that I got facts wrong. So mm. I want to know where's the misinformation and facts wrong that I got. I think the biggest issue I had with you and correct me if I'm wrong was about the misinformation about um, rape victims and how real victims act. I, to be fair to you, this is a very common narrative in the world that like all victims act the same. So I think my biggest issue with your content was just that, that I felt like that's not true. Like victims of sexual assault don't all act the same. Some people stay with their abusers. Some people report them to the cops. Some people never tell anyone. Some people only tell their best friends. Some people only tell their therapists. I think that was the biggest issue I had with it. That was that was like the misinformation. I think so. I can't recall at this point what the what else it could have been. Do you have an idea? Maybe I'm misremembering what else it could have been. Um 
Well, I mean, I think the only thing I said is like, imagine being actually like raped and having to look at this girl yeah. act as if she's getting on her soapbox and lecturing other people about how false accusations hurt real victims trying to act like a genuine real victim. I think that's just hilarious. Yeah. Um, irony. Yeah. What do you think about that? Like, um, I, I've heard that narrative a lot. Like I've heard people say like, she's like ashamed to real victims and stuff like that. I'm not sure I really understand that perspective mostly because JD I don't hurts real victims that come out with their story. Yes. Because when you come out with your story and you lie, that hurts real victims and it's going to put doubt into more people and more women who come forward with their story. That's just objectively true. Um, if she lied, right? So the dilemma we're having, right? Wait, we is, already wait. We already well, not did not, we not just cover that that she did lie. We already well, know she didn't that she lie lied. about and George. We didn't lie about George sexually assaulting her, right? We agreed on that. That from her perspective, he did sexually assault her. Um, she. We're getting to the weeds. The semantics. She lied in her story, accusing George. That hurts real victims, and that's why people discredited her. Well, people discredit that people who don't lie as well, women. right? Like it's I don't think it's I agree with you that lying hurts and adds to the contribution, but at the end of the day, like one person isn't impacting the movement. This is like saying like one all, person with a huge following that a whole bunch of like the internet has latched onto. Maybe if you're talking about a normal girl in like a friend group, but this is a girl who's had a ton of public info like news where XQC covers them, big right. streamers. What do you mean? This is a huge example okay, that but will make people disbelieve women who come forward in the future right but huge... just but just to make sure even if she lied within the storytelling of her story doesn't mean she's lying about the essay no but regardless that discredits her story well and that's why people would dismiss her i think that's the problem is like no one is a perfect victim like victims of essay do lie victims of essay can be bad people like i don't know it doesn't mean the essay is okay right okay so she's I feel like, I, I don't know. I feel like, isn't it pretty obvious what I'm communicating right now? She lied in her story. Yes. Therefore, that's going to hurt real victims coming out with their story and put doubt on other women who come forward with their story because people are going to think, oh, dude, Katie Bugs just happened a week ago. She's probably doing the same thing. Amber Heard just happened. They're probably pulling an Amber Heard. This is what puts doubt in people's minds socially. Yeah, I think that that's the problem of society, though, because if Katie's enough for you to doubt real victims, I don't think the problem's with Katie ultimately. I think it's with you. But I do agree with you in general because people are sheep. They will think, oh, well, this one girl must represent all women, which makes no sense, right? Like it makes no sense for that to be the case in terms of statistics. So I agree I'm not with arguing you. whether it's justified if society does right. or not. I'm speaking that on the assumption that this is society and this is what happens in society. And because society is the way it is, she is hurting real victims who come out with their story and putting doubt on their story. Yeah, I agree. That's how people perceived it. I think that's why, like, look, you took the side that a lot of people took, which is great. And a lot of people took Katie's side, and that's great. And then here's my little channel where I'm like, can we do something different with this story? And then here we are having this conversation. Why do you think it's important that I... Like, what does it matter what Brittany thinks if I'm, like, the one person who's like, let's look at this from a philosophy perspective, bros, because that's, like, what I do. That's my niche. I don't so, deeply care about what you think. I just think it's interesting content to have a conversation. Do we right. Have so, like, like you're here for thing? clicks and views, right? Like, you're here for clicks and views, Of course. Right? Everyone okay. is. Yes, I'm here right. for money. <laughs> right. Okay. So, like, that's great. But that's what I'm saying is, like, I'm here for the answers and to make money. So, I'm actually here because this is my hobby. Okay, I'm here. <laughs> what is the What is the relevance of this? The point is, like, in order to have this conversation in a way that might make sense to you, you have to understand my motivations, just like you have to understand Katie's motivations. So you want to argue and debate me and something I don't do for a living. My job as a living is this. I dissect things. So the reason our conversation might not work for clicks and views is because I don't do this for clicks and views outside of my field. <laughs> my field is in dissecting information. So I can pretend to fight with you, but like this, th this is what I think does matter. This is how I have the conversations. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if you meant to hit me up because you thought we were going to debate, but if I wanted to okay. debate, I would have oh, been sorry. a debater. I don't, I don't mean, okay. I don't mean to fight you. Okay. No fighting. This isn't fight. Sure, sure, sure. Just, I disagree with you. Yes. We're speaking about the matter of the situation. Okay. So, okay. Let's, yeah. Let's I just okay. want to talk about the details of the situation, not this big meta, okay. why we're here, Oh, my here's something. Okay, here's, well, okay, here's, <laughs> you basically are saying, I don't want you to do your job, because <laughs> that's my job. 
<laughs> so okay, I'll jump okay. into your job and I'll okay, do. You can, no, okay. You you can do what you want. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. I'm just trying to explain so we yes. get on trail here. This sure, is, sure, like, sure. Discuss the story. Okay, but... how about this? Something you said that did upset me. Okay, ready? You discounted Katie, George, and Dream's perspective. I think you called Dream and George like um like a beta or something. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Because I probably called them like snakes for fucking over the front and throwing him under the bus. Tell me about that. Tell me about that perspective. Because I honestly think those friends should get lost if they didn't check with George first. Like, fuck those people, right? Yeah, I believe you said I didn't have enough empathy to understand um, that Dream and Sapnap didn't actually throw George under the bus. I which, agree with yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. they didn't completely cut ties, of course, with them. But they disavowed him publicly saying he did a fucked up thing and supported his false accuser. I, I don't know if my if my friends did that I would cl that would classify that as them throwing me under the bus and fucking me over like a hundred percent. Well, from my understanding, did you hear something different? I heard they're all still friends, and that what they did was wait, wait I didn't wait I didn't just say I just said they didn't cut ties. Okay, they just so disavowed him publicly and fucked him over by that. Well, in public, in okay. So when I covered this story, a bunch of their viewers came into my stream, and from my understanding of the bubble, their their little ecosystem, they. They all agreed, including George, that they feel bad for Katie, that he apologized to Katie, that he did wrong by Katie, but also it was not malicious. They didn't mean to hurt Katie and they're sorry she feels that way. So they did apologize to Katie and they supported George, which is, by the way, I think the most mature outcome. What do you think? So I think they're kneeling to public pressure. At first, Dream was on George's side 100%. Then the pressure got a little bit too high. It got a little bit too hot for him. And then he went on an impromptu Twitter space and started crying live on the Twitter space saying, George did a fucked up thing. Please support Katie on his hands and knees, begging like for forgiveness. I think that's pretty clear what his motivations were there. Mm, I think you're doing that thing where you're like, I don't know if it's pretty clear. Okay. We don't have to get into the like whole <laughs> of the motivations or not. But regardless, yeah. like, the... the the thing that you push back on me is saying is that this isn't fucking him over where I don't know. I think that is the disavowing him publicly and supporting his false accuser over well, nothing. Again, Even if this did happen. This yeah. is nothing. Uh, Even if it did happen, it's nothing. And they're supporting oh. Katie bugs. Wait, wait, wait. You're saying if George did assault her, it would be nothing. Um, Under what happened, what Katie bugs said happened. That is not. Uh, I mean, if we want to get into the semantics of what sexual assault is, regardless, I'm looking at the actions and I see no problem with the actions. It was a slow progression of flirting, touching. She positively reciprocated and George kept going. I have no problem with those actions. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I don't think I have a problem with people having social mistakes, but I think if you hurt people, you should apologize. And I think you should move on. <laughs> I think George should apologize and Katie should move on. What if I said you hurt me in this conversation by being too rude? Would you like apologize to me? Would you think that's like a justified apology? I would definitely say that my intention is not to be rude. And if that is very serious, obviously I'm not trying to be rude. And I hope you know that. Right. No, but what I'm trying to explain is that it's bullshit. Like but just because someone says something about you doesn't mean you now have to apologize. I agree. I agree with that. But George, I think genuinely and so did Dream you, felt it necessary to apologize. I'm saying I don't think they're doing it to fake. I think they actually believe they should apologize for making her feel uncomfortable. Right. <laughs> Um, okay. I think that's just, I, I just disagree with the fact that George needs to apologize. I think that's he fine. didn't do yeah. anything wrong. Yeah, that's totally fine. Right. And again, I, I think like sometimes like, the, I think that's the dilemma. So now you're projecting your morals onto George and everybody else. And you're saying everyone should think like me. How? Explain. Well, cause you're saying, I don't think it's wrong. So therefore George did something silly by apologizing. And I'm saying, but George thought it was wrong. So he apologized. And that should be I mean, good yeah, enough. Sure, that's my that's my personal opinion. I For feel sure. like I back it up pretty strongly, though. But sure, it's my opinion. Yeah, but I think that's the point is like I'm you do this thing, which is fine in your video where you basically you're making the video about you. It's not really about them. So you you don't care about their opinions or what they think about. You care about yours, which is totally fine. And I make a video where I, I care about their opinions <clears throat> and I'm critiquing their opinions. That's what the video is. OK. So then, like, I guess agree to disagree, right? Like, I you're taking a moral high ground. You're trying to, like, make it sound like you have the best opinion. I just think you have one of the many opinions. <laughs> and I don't think it's the best. I think it's probably one of the worst. <laughs> but, like, it's fine. <laughs> you know Can what you I mean? Can you expand on that a little? Oh. 
I think it's not well-rounded enough. I think it doesn't take into account different cultures and different people's belief systems. I think it doesn't honor the people involved. I think it doesn't in, include a lot of like understanding about like why people do what they do. I think it makes sense. I think you explained yourself clearly. I think you have a worldview that makes sense to you. I just don't think it it maps onto other people's and I think the world is diverse and doesn't revolve around me. So I think your content felt a little bit like it revolves around your narrative, which is fine. That's mostly it's the world. Um, but yeah, I, I, that's probably my disagreement is that it, it just felt a little bit like fuck George, fuck dream, fuck Katie, fuck well, anyone. Mm -hmm. I can, I can listen to what they're saying. I can understand why they did it. I have a pretty good assumption why George did this thing, why dream did this thing, why sap sure. app did all these things. I can still critique it at the same time though. Is your problem that just I'm critiquing it at all and not just no, not no. only listening, but just agreeing with them? No, no, no. It's definitely not that. Like, agree to disagree, right? And ultimately, my video about you is agree to disagree. Like, I just don't agree. But I think the difference- Well, you said there's misinformation and facts wrong. Well, I think the misinformation- the I, on the I, topic. I mean, I, mean I, I, I feel like you're, I don't know, you're really hot in your video, but now you're coming on it's a much more- uh, you know, hey, neutral hey, conversation. To be fair, to be fair, to be fair, you know how it is when you're alone on stream and you're like riling up the audience and it's a lot of fun, okay? Like you get, I'm a little bit more heated on stream for sure than I am um, when I'm sure. talking to people. Uh, for yeah. sure, it's for sure. Um, take it with a grain of salt, I guess, like that I'm just like being entertaining as well. But no, I do, I do think that I was disappointed with, but then, and I mean this with the utmost, just the utmost respect as an older sister with seven younger siblings. I, are you 20? Are you really 20 years old? <laughs> Freshly 20. Okay, freshly market. 20. Okay, so like with peace and love, I have 15 years on you and I have, a th I am assuming, I don't know how much you read. You probably have read as much as I have or maybe not, but I've read like thousands of books. I've traveled countries. I live in Europe What is currently. this supposed to mean to me? Ah, it means that I have like so many different cultural references and people's like way of living in my head. So when I observe a situation, I get to use all of these But this isn't an argument. This isn't any information. Like you're not, you're not giving any argument. You're just appealing to your age. Well, you know that, right? I'm saying the age has given me time to do all this research and to consume all this content. I could have been 35 and never consumed this content for sure. 100. So, so it's I, not I, just this the is age. Just not an argument. Just, if you disagree about something I'm saying, that's fine. But this isn't an argument. It's just a waste of speech. This is a waste of oxygen right now. <laughs> okay. I mean... <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I'm getting to debates, but like, I, it's, I don't know. It's not that. It's like we're – so we're coming from very different experiences, so different perspectives. So we're going to disagree, and you're focused on the argument, and I'm not arguing for anything. I'm arguing – I'm saying like – What do you mean you're not arguing for let's, anything? I'm saying, what does let's, that mean? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to change your mind. Okay, what are you doing then? You're talking without arguing? I feel like these are just semantics. Like clearly you're making your argument by explaining your position, right? Well – so, okay, d uh, talk, okay, making a prescription, trying to change someone's mind is insinuating that you have the right answer. I'm more about exploring ideas and figuring out who has the right answer because it might not be me. But also, I have to know how you got to where you are. So when I tell you a little bit about me, I'm telling you how I got to my conclusions. I'm explaining the math problem to you and not just giving you the answer. But it sounds like you just want the answer. The answer is 69. Does what? that make sense? Yeah. See, does it make it doesn't make sense? So I'm trying to explain how we got to 69. But you feel like the <laughs> explanation doesn't make sense to you. But also, okay. keep, you know what I mean. So. Okay. I think we should. Uh, let me. Can I get us back on trail a little bit? Is that okay? <laughs> I have another question. <laughs> uh, yeah. Human's gonna human, like in the mug. Based. Um. Okay. So. In 22 minutes in your video, you said, in your opinion, Katie is freshly 18 until she is 19. This sentence is a contradiction inherently, though. How can Katie be freshly 18 for the entire duration that she is 18? Doesn't yeah. that defeat the purpose of how we use these words in the first place? Mm -hmm. So literally, if we're only talking about age, she would be considered um, somewhat 18 or a little into 18 or halfway through 18. But the insinuation of the context of the conversation was, I'm freshly 18 because it mattered, because she was naive and young and didn't know anything, I think all 18-year-olds are young and naive and don't know anything. So the way she's using it is my assumption is freshly 18 is meant to signify naivety, which it, which exists throughout the whole age of 18 and even into 19 and 20 and whatever. That's That's what I'm saying in my work. I'm saying if her point was that she was newly 18 without any baggage attached to it, 
whatever. But the baggage attached to it is that she's naive because she's freshly 18. And my argument is all 18 year olds are freshly 18 because all so of can them I are be naive. freshly can I be freshly 20? When does it end? Can I be freshly 21, freshly 22? Mm, well, it actually changes. So Dr. Kirk Honda, who's a therapist on a therapist in Seattle, but he has a YouTube channel. He says like, uh, oh, you guys are so young. You're just kids. You're in your 30s because he's in his 50s. I think when you're old, everyone is young. So I'm some, I'm a kid to people. Most people who meet me they're, who are older, they're like, oh my God, you're such a baby. I'm like, I know. Thank you. Because I'm 35. I'm a baby. So obviously it's contextual. I would say that in Brittany's opinion, if I would say like what age would I start looking at people a little bit more seriously? Um, probably 28, 27, okay. 28. I guess just what I'm disagreeing on is that you use this as a like a defense to like defend Katie in a sense. You brought this up in your video saying, well, you know, freshly 18, you like dismiss the point saying she's freshly 18 the entire duration she's 18. And that's just inherently a contradiction of a sentence that just makes no sense what, I think how can point, someone be freshly 18 the entire time that's like what i'm pushing back on i know but the point she was making is what i agree with her on that she was naive and that from my understanding her parents or her mom i don't remember who sent her friend with her to watch her that Are she you was like mind reading her position right now i thought we weren't assuming like that's no, a big point you made in no, your video but that's the context so like that's the context of the the video. The context of the video is to show she's making a case for why she's naive. And she's like, I'm freshly 18. And that's a good, that's like, yeah, that's like, okay, so she's 18. That's like, that's a good. Yeah, but do you know the purpose why she said she was freshly 18? She used this phrasing purposely to make George look more predatory than he actually is. If she said she was like a freshly an adult, that would be fine. But she chose this wording on purpose yes. and then got called on to the fact that she was, wasn't freshly 18. Then yeah, but that's normal. I mean, Isn't, I that. That's so human, dude. Everyone does that. Politicians do that. News anchors do that. YouTubers do that. That is so everywhere. Everyone does. You're doing it now, kind so you of. Can't, so you can't critique it? No, you can critique it. But I just, I think you're critiquing it in a way that doesn't um, allow for the truth to come out. It's too biased. It's like, you're doing it now. You're putting so much on her. Like you're, you're putting so much responsibility on her that I'm not sure you're being fair to her either. Like, do you think you could be fair to Katie? Like, do you think you're being fair to her? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, that's the thing, right? I think I'm being fair to Katie and George as well. Okay. That's cool. But I'm explaining like points why I believe this way and that she said she was freshly 18 to make George look more predatory than he is. Like that is, do you disagree with that? She did that to make him look more of a predator. Well, I think she did that to make it a point, right? If I was 22 and I had a guy in a his point 50s, of what? A point of what? A point well, of what? Well, I agree with you to make it clear that he's a predator, that oh, he's picking okay. on younger uh, women. I agree okay. with you. Oh. So we okay. But gotcha. you're making it sound like she's maliciously doing it. I'm not sure she's planning it so much as she's doing a good strategic Well, point. I've already explained how she has done that. Well, lied, I know, but, but like no no no, there's two different kinds of planning. When I went to court to defend myself, you have to plan a good case. Even if you're innocent, you have to be strategic. You're implying that because she's strategic, she's guilty. And I'm saying no. I'm saying could be. Cuz she's strategic, she's guilty. Yeah, but what if the strategy is literally lying and over-exaggerating to the point of just misinformation? Exactly. So do we like, know which one it problem. is? But do we know which one it is? For real, for real? Or do we just think Explained earlier, yes, because we have the text message proof showing that it was her and her friends who suggested get the alcohol. Yes, but- I don't know. I feel like- But, okay, if you take- Okay, uh, now it's like we're like a judge and jury. Uh, I think it's fine that you came to the consensus you did, but you feel like I came to the wrong consensus. And I'm saying, what's the difference from me saying you came to the wrong one and you saying I came to the wrong one? What's the difference? You think I've, that, yeah. Because I believe I have evidence and facts to back up what I'm saying. And exactly. You know. And I believe I don't have enough evidence or facts to come to a conclusion. So the one I came to, I'm open to changing, but the evidence isn't going to come from you. It's going to come from Katie, George, and Dream. Well, Katie and George, Right. Because I've seen the same evidence you have, and I still came to a different conclusion. I saw I saw the videos. I saw the text messages. I read them out to my stream. My stream and I also agreed, like, yep, like, I maybe could be a predator. Katie could be fucking tricking all of us on the internet. We could all be dumb as fuck, and maybe you're so right, and I'm going to, you know, need to call you up in a month and be like, bro, you totally fucking called it. For sure. But I'm not willing to come to a definite conclusion. So my definite conclusion, I feel like, is more realistic, which is like miscommunication, awkward communication. Maybe Katie has somebody in her life that said, tell this story. And we're assuming it's the friends. Maybe it's not the friends. Maybe it's somebody okay. else, right? Okay. We, yeah, we can move on from this point. I guess uh, just the disagreement with the awkward communication. Yes, there's miscommunications, but then there's lies. 
So there's For sure. both two different things there. I agree. I but, agree uh, they're different. Mm -hmm. We can move on uh, to the next thing, I guess. Um, so what is this? Um, around in like 38 minutes in your video, when you react to me showing how Katie blatantly lied, you dismiss it by saying, I don't know why we're attacking a 19 year old like any of you are better. What mm. is this point? Katie should be exempt from criticism after making a false accusation about lying about George. Um, so, yeah. OK, don't think it's a false accusation. We don't know if it is. Right. So you have to take that out of your narrative. You have to ask me the question without that narrative. Like, do you think Katie should be is held she exempt accountable? of criticism for okay. lying about George? No, if about the cell phone lie, no, she should be held accountable for like misrepresenting that. And absolutely the way we would hold her accountable is probably by unsubscribing, right? That's like how the internet can work. You don't have to send her death threats, which you know she's gotten. You know she's gotten so much heat. So don't do that, right? But like unsubscribe, you know, maybe don't trust her. Maybe give her a chance to come back from it. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Who knows? But um, I don't think 19 year olds are exempt, but I think I tr I meet them where they're at. I don't treat a 19 year old like a 35 year old. I don't treat everyone the same. I treat everyone based off of the context of who they are. And that's how the law works. That's how people judge people. We treat people usually better or worse if we know them or don't know them. So I see 19 year olds and I think, okay, undeveloped brain, not socialized, probably mentally ill. Uh, I mean, it just comes across as like a dismissive defense when you say, I don't know, why are we attacking this girl? She's only 19. Why are we attacking this girl? It's like, because what? it's because people are going harder on Katie than other adults in the space. And I also, to be fair, had just covered the Andrew Huberman case and my audience and I are up to date with things. So I'm also talking to my audience, right? I've got to learn as a YouTuber when I make my clips to assume people that aren't my audience will see them and how they might read the context. But like, obviously, like even Andrew Huberman, who's a Stanford professor or like a scientist, sorry, for Stanford, he just got outed and like, that doesn't matter. And he's a grown up. They're holding him less accountable you know, then they're going to hold Katie. But again, like Katie's 19, people lie. Like this grown man was caught lying. Nobody gave a fuck. You know what I mean? Nobody gives a fuck. So the point I was making was just that it's funny that the internet keeps going for Katie so hard, but they won't go for any of these other people who are adults. And I just think it, we pick and choose. I think Katie's an easy target. I think she's annoying and people think she's annoying. Well, it's just the popularity of the topic. You know, she's yeah, going after course. a 10 million subscriber YouTuber. That's probably what has the most attention. Yeah, yeah, of course. Absolutely. Right. And then she's rolling in those circles and like, oh, my gosh, I've been to so many VidCons in my life. I've hung out with so many YouTubers. It's drama and it's messy. And honestly, <laughs> I thank God I'm like in my little corner of Europe. You know, the Internet's messy. And I'm just trying to be as factual as I can be. But at the end of the day, like we just don't have all the facts, you know, so I, I think you could be right. There could be a potentiality for that. And if Katie comes out to be a Machiavellian genius, I will fucking DM you. I will get on stream and be like, bro, you were right. She's Satan, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no one's saying that, but uh, you know? we can move on. At 11 minutes in your video, you defend Katie by saying, uh, quickly, if you want it, do you have any questions for me? I don't want to just get my questions out. Do you uh, have anything you want to do? Nope. Boop. Go ahead. Okay. So at 11 minutes in your video, you defend Katie by saying she corrected herself over the misinformation she spread about George's friend sending a text message saying he is watching a 26-year-old George cuddle with an 18-year-old Katie. I believe that's what was said, but this isn't Katie taking accountability or coming forward of her mistakes at all. The only reason she's now apologizing is because George called her out for it and put her in a corner. And this is her only way out. I don't know if you're aware, but uh, Katie in the same stream says that she was given the information beforehand that uh, it wasn't George. Wait, wait, information before George responded. Yeah, she was given the information before George responded in his video that the text message wasn't from the guy she claimed it was, but still chose to not correct the record and let that lie continue to spread, despite her knowing it was wrong. Oh, uh, I know you I didn't get that part of my video either. Maybe but, I uh, misheard I that. that yeah, maybe you need to replay. Maybe you do need to. Is there a way you can make the volume a little louder too? Because it's a little low on the video playing. If it's not, it's okay. I thought she said so. that she oh. found out later that she, that's why she corrected it after. Not that she posted the video knowing it was wrong. You're saying she posted the video knowing it was wrong information? No, not video. This is the Twitter response. So she posted the Twitter oh. response. She posted the Twitter response claiming that it was George's friend. Then the real girl messaged her after she posted the Twitter response and said, hey, you got this wrong. Actually, it wasn't George's friend. It was me. Okay. And despite knowing that information, she never corrected the record herself. Let that lie to continue to be spread without mm. correcting it. With, despite her knowing it was wrong until George had to be the one to let it be known to the public. Oh, okay. So more. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's pretty bad. Okay. So Katie, I'm just going to like tell that to my brain again. 
So Katie literally was told and didn't correct. Okay, so she did. That's really bad. Okay, didn't correct. No, I'm not a fan of that at all. So she waited for George to come out. Now, okay, I'm going to do my thing again. Give her the benefit of the doubt, maybe. But again, she could be a bitch. Who knows? Okay, do you so. Do to play a section for us? Oh, like... sure. Yeah. Do you want to do that? Go ahead. Yeah. Let me see if this is George's works. friend. The screenshot. Okay, here we go. Go ahead. <laughs> Fucking cry me a river. In this hour long stream though, Katie responds to a lot of the critiques that people have been levying at her and apparently is taking accountability for lying. First addressing the text that she said was from George's friend. The screenshot, I will acknowledge. That was a complete miscommunication. There's a screenshot I said was from his friend that wasn't there for the assault. It's a real screenshot. What I got wrong and what was miscommunicated was who it was from. It was actually from instead of the guy who left or wasn't there for the assault, it was from the girl. Yeah, she's doubling down on the fact that it was it was just a miscommunication on her end, which is the real reason why she got it wrong, despite her being the one who literally had to censor out the name or number of the person who sent the text. But get this, Katie then continues to say that the girl who's the real one who sent the text actually messaged her when she posted it and told Katie that it was her, not the guy who she was claiming it was. But for some reason, Katie never corrected the record and continue to let that lie float around despite her knowing that it was wrong. I got a message from the girl that actually sent the text and was like, it was a while after I already posted my response and was like, you kind of mixed up who the text was from, but I'm sure it won't be a big deal because it was only one of the minor things you said, which obviously we've seen uh, that was not the case, but I do acknowledge and own up to the fact I oh. completely was wrong about that. No, you're not owning up to this. You're taking mm. the only option you have left after being proven. Okay, so, yeah. do you see, do you see the way she said that? Um, that's interesting to my brain. So I remember that. But did you hear the way she told the story, which could be wrong, by the way, that the girl said it shouldn't be that big of a deal. I'm sure no one noticed, which means the girl is saying, don't correct it yet. Not a big deal. And she's the one who sent the text message. But I understand they should have corrected it because it insinuated that the guy who did it, did it. And so both of those girls made a very bad mistake, like or a very bad decision. Here, I'll give you the, I'll stop saying mistake. They made a very bad decision in assuming it wouldn't be a big deal. It's a huge deal. They she made- purposely let the lie be spread. Okay, she yes. She knew it was wrong and didn't make a correction. That's like, I, come on. Yes, okay, but like, okay, you're doing this thing again where like, are they kids who think it's not a big deal and like literally won't matter? Or do they understand the weight of what they just did? I don't think they under, I, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> So I, I don't know. This comes across as really big as like just dismissing all of this. I'm not dismissing it. Like that's the problem. <laughs> there's is like so many different things here. Like is, this isn't a one off. This isn't a twice occasion. Sure, 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 sure. Like, there's so much against Katie here. Well, again, I, I think we I think the problem is like we agree Katie did something. Katie miss. Well, I think we just don't agree that Katie's being intentional. I don't know that. I can't know that. Like, I know you feel like you that have enough- not intentional. She knew it was wrong and she let it be continue to be spread. Well- Because it benefited her. Because she knew it would look bad if she replied down and said, um, actually, this is wrong. She knew that would look bad. She was hoping well, she could pull a fast one and George wouldn't correct her. Well, she said that, okay, the video and stuff had been up for a while. Then her friend goes, hey, this is me. You misunderstood. Then she goes, okay. Then George makes his video and then she corrects her after. So I think that's fair. But again, like, was she sitting in her room thinking like, fuck it, fuck this guy. I'm going to let him take the heat for it. Or was she like, okay, uh, well, no, because okay. this matters. Like, I know you think it doesn't matter, but if you're being very serious and I'm, okay, it very much matters. Okay. It has to matter. Otherwise, there's no point to us living in a society. Like, it has to matter. Like, it has to matter why she did it. If I want the world to get better, we have to understand why people make these decisions. And it's not just because they're bad. It's because they think it's right. So why does Katie think this is okay? You keep thinking she knows it's wrong. Why do you think it's okay? Why do you think it's okay? Well, I don't think it's that okay. She just did that. I don't think it's okay. Why do you think she thinks it's okay? That's a great question. I think she thinks it's not a big deal. Really? Probably. Maybe. But I don't know that. But I don't know okay. that, right? Like, that's the problem is like, so listen, as a, let me tell you, okay, how many instances I've had grown adults to my face justify the weirdest things to me. They're like, but it's okay. You can logic bro your way into anything like, in, you know, including a war, but here we are living in a world. So Katie could have logic her way into any bad decision. And I'm saying it's not a justification. She should be held accountable within reason. I don't like the mob. I'm sure you wouldn't like it if a mob came for you. Right. And you didn't feel like you were being represented. I'm not saying Katie's innocent. I'm saying Katie might not be as evil as she's being painted. And George, George is doing the best he can with what he has. I'm saying I can't, as a grown up, look at a 19 year old 
and not remember being messy and miscommunicating and knowing how messy. Look at the politicians, girl. Everybody be messy. I don't know why we're putting so much responsibility on Katie, except to say that we would like to see a world that understands how to be better. And I don't think the world that's criticizing Katie is much better. Okay. Just to put in perspective, do you know what like like Katie has done to George? Like George will forever have sexual assault allegations following his name for the rest of his life. Um, you like mean, any like, girl he goes on a date with, sure. they search up his name and they see accused of sexual assault for his entire existence. That's what Katie has done to him. Yes, I agree. That's pretty awful. And same with me. If you look me up, like my stalker bullshit will come up. That's one of the worst things you could do to someone. That's one of the worst things you could do. So I'm telling you, I have a lived experience. If you look me up, it will come across as like Britney sex trafficked me, which obviously isn't true. I've gone to court over this. And I don't say my stalker's name on stream because I've already gone to court over it. Don't evoke her name. She will take you to court. Okay, because that's what she does. She's a serial, whatever they call it, perpetrator of this. There are rumors of me on the internet. Britney sex trafficked me. Britney did this horrible thing to me. I never did any of those things. And I've already proved my case. And that will follow me. So you should understand better yes, than anyone. And I do understand, which is why I'm telling you, as somebody who's experienced it, I know what it feels like to heal from the trauma of somebody violating your name. And I know that my stalker is sick and Katie is sick, and people do bad things to people because they think it's right. It doesn't make it right, and I held my stalker as accountable as I could through the law. Didn't do much, by the way. She's still a free person. I don't know if you know this. Like, it's very hard to keep those people in jail. But ultimately, I don't know what Katie's intentions were, right? So I am telling you I've done it. Regardless, based off of her actions, this is what she's caused for another man, which is like, will destroy, like, I mean, heavily damage his reputation But remember, for the rest of his life. we don't know if she actually thinks she was sexually assaulted or not. We don't, don't know I, I, that. Like right now, but we've already discussed that nauseam, but right now I, I don't really think that's like much important. But it this has is to the matter. This is what Habibi, she has done you're to accusing this man her, based off of his I actions. I know, but she hasn't actions. done anything to a man. She did something to a man who sexually assaulted her in her perception, which you would agree if somebody sexually assaulted you, you should tell everybody about it, right? Like, would you yeah, say- Yeah, but do you understand how you can critique that? So let's say like, I, I per, like you can personally think that you were sexually assaulted over something as little as what? I mean, just for the sake of an argument. It's obviously exaggeratory, but say like, you know, some girl touched my hand without my consent. Oh, well, you sexually assaulted me. Obviously, that would be insane if I now accuse her on my public platform of sexual sure. assault and now follows her for the rest of her life. Like it's it's a disagreement on the contents of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that as well. I mean, I, I agree with you. I think this is the part of the society that we haven't had these conversations yet. Because remember that marital and spousal grape wasn't even a thing until people, because people didn't think you could grape your own spouse. Do you know that was a thing? Recently, like people didn't know you could be graped by your own husband. It had to be like put on the books. So like humans, like we're still learning, like what is the line? What is appropriate? What is cons What is a possibility? And I don't think the world, I think this is one of those cases where we're going to have to learn the hard way. You're right. It's incredibly disturbing. So he just becomes like a martyr. I don't know. I feel like you're just well, very dismissive of this, but we can move on. I don't mean to be dismissive. I think what I am is I'm not personally involved. I'm not putting my personal emotions into it. I'm just speaking like I'm trying not to make it personal because it's not per it's not about me and it's not personal. And I think that there's a lot of pain and hurt and people are projecting like, what if I was that man? And I'm saying as somebody who was that woman. Yeah, I know that this is just how life goes and you have to do your best to defend yourself and in life is not fair. But more than that, in order to stop this from happening again, we have to have more conversations about consent, more conversations about verbalizing desire. So we don't have false accusations running around. So men yeah, can I say- Yeah, I think like both things can coexist though. Like I yeah, agree with what yeah, you're yeah, saying. Yeah, we should yeah. have more conversations. Whatever, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, you okay moving on? Yeah. All right, at 31, 31 minutes in your video, you push back on my point by saying 20, uh, 26 and 18 is completely inappropriate, mm. which is fine if you personally believe. But as sure. I explained in my video, the problem is that Katie was using this to try to paint him out to be a predator by using yeah. phrases like, he's a much older and more powerful man, which is purposely phrased that way. And uh, do you think a 26-year-old trying to get with an 18-year-old makes you not a predator? Uh, no, I don't think anything makes you a predator unless you are one. Okay. So, so I mean, yeah, like I, we probably agree. It's like, I guess, you know, at yeah. worst, I wouldn't want my daughter being 18 and hooking up with like a 26 year old we could agree if that's like sure. weird and you'll judge them yeah, yeah but, i mean yeah. she was using this as another you know hay bale on uh, like another st uh, something to stack onto george to try to accuse him of being a predator you know yeah for sure i i mean i definitely think like and i am assuming i hate to say it this way because i don't know this but i'm assuming that that was sort of that was a part of the script right make it clear show the differences oh my gosh like yeah obviously i think we agree that 
whether or not malicious or not, because again, you can't know those things. The, obviously, it was meant to say like 26 and 18, you know, obviously, if it, lots of people have that relationship and it works out fine, it's not my favorite age gap, but she is the legal adult. So at the end of the day, it was it was well within the law. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. And then you follow up um, three minutes later by saying 18 is the new eight. Can you expand <laughs> on that? Why did you say this? Can you like, yeah, I don't well, know, what, what was your perspective there? I, I think what I was trying to get at is that it feels like, and this is sort of coming out with studies, but we're still working on figuring it out that a lot of things like COVID or the internet is kind of postponing like a maturity expectation. People are moving out later in life. People are getting independence later in life. So there's going to be sort of a stagnation and social uh, situations. And I think um, 18 feels really young like do they even know anything can they do anything um i don't know if you have parents that are very old mine's mine are in their 60s and i always say like oh they're grown grown like they're Same. 65 you know they're like grown-ups when i look at myself and my husband and we're watching the anime and we have a cat and that's our biggest responsibility i'm like man we kids bro but we're not kids but like we're not grown and even my parents they're like why aren't you guys growing up like we did? And I'm like, well, we don't have to, girl. We can make money and chill and watch anime for the rest of our life. So just like basically an inflammatory statement. Of yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. 18-year-olds are still young. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. That's what I thought it probably was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Got to make sure, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, though. So in 46 minutes of your video, you gave the defense that in my bubble, cuddling is neutral and bring up that uh, when you Google the definition of cuddling, it uses the example sentence of he cuddles the baby close. Yeah. But don't you think the context of Katie and George being both adults of the opposite sex obviously changes the implication of cuddling, though, as opposed to what you do to a baby? I'm like, you know? obviously I'm very into context. So, it, yes, except um, and this is look again, different, different lifestyles, different experiences. Um, yes. But I also know there are contexts that I'm open to it, especially and I know this might sound like a dismiss, but it, it really is context. Um, not everyone cuddles the same or spoons the same. I also don't know if they mean spooning horizontal on the couch or if they mean like side to side. I was confused on that because I think people describe spooning differently. Like I think spooning is when you're like crotch to boobs, like crotch to cr crotch to butt, Yeah, you know, and chest yeah. to back. So – she said she was on the couch cuddling and spooning and she was turning towards somebody else. So my brain was like, does she mean that they were on the couch and they were kind of like cuddling? It was confusing. So obviously it's hugely different. I'm just pointing out that we don't know the exact context. And since no one else in that room also thought it was weird or called it out, I'm assuming nobody else picked up on the context. So I'm assuming there was like a lot of miscommunication guess, from everyone. Yeah. I, like I I still disagree that like cuddling is a neutral act and that in Katie's bubble, it means nothing. Oh, it could. I, I, I don't know. Disagree it, could on mean, that. it could mean a lot. It but, could mean I'm putting out tonight, girl. I don't know what it means. Yeah, you know, yeah. but even if I, uh, yeah, because a any experience I've had, if I'm cuddling with a girl, it's like, obviously it's going to go to the next step. I don't know if it's sure. my personal bubble, but, uh, sure. I mean, know, we all have different even, li lived experiences, right? Everyone does everything different. Okay, yeah. But even if I grant you the sake of that cuddling's a neutral act for the sake of the argument, I mean, Katie also said they were spooning. How do you friendly spoon with someone? I mean, yeah, what that's bubble a bubble does that. <laughs> like, you know, do you know a bubble that friendly spoons? Yeah, I spoons mean, someone? that was all you're explaining all of my 20s, bro. Like, I, you look, when you're hanging you're out with a friendly spoon, look, if you're with hanging out men of the opposite sex, you're attracted well, to. Well, I'm pansexual, so everybody, girls, boys, it didn't matter. Oh. But, like, think about it, right? Like, you're, you're D, D, it's late at night, you're all kind of drunk, and you end up all spooning in bed. Like, I don't know. Is my 20s just like, Maybe wild, maybe. You do not think that's flirtatious, though, when you're spooning in bed with someone? Wouldn't you like, self-admit that that's flirtatious? Okay, here's a question for you. Because, like, I'm also in the queer bubbles mostly, and I'm with a lot of, like, gay people. Like, we kiss, and it's not – we're not even going anywhere with it, girl. Like, we okay. – you know, we're in a different world. And so that's what I'm saying is, like, I don't know how queer her bubble is. And apparently Dream is bisexual. So, like, they might just be a bunch of queer kids. You know what I mean? Like, they might be theater kids. Theater kids be making out. So, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know if you, like, you're... Well, obviously, you George and George's mm -hmm. bottle, he thinks it's more than just friendly cuddling. Well, George, obviously, I think... Well, you know what confuses me? I just is, have a tough time believing this because it's such a low percentage, I feel like, of people, especially in the States. I'm not talking about, like, different cultures outside, well, of, like, countries or whatever. People in the States. I mean, I, like, I, I'm talking about... in the States, and she thinks that... It's really, she was just friendly cuddling that night with them? Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know what she thought. I agree with hard you. It's buy. very hard to know. I, I agree. I would have – see, I'm so like 
blunt. I would have been like, what are you guys doing? Are you guys flirting? What's happening? What's going on? I'm confused. What are you doing on the couch together? But see, that's the problem is like they're not verbalizing it. And also, you know what I'll point I'll point out that Katie did that I was really like I when I first covered her, I was really upset about was she said, I thought this is what I had to do to hang out with bigger content creators and get views and stuff, which insinuates yeah, like that's absurd. That's absurd, season. right? And I hate that narrative. And that narrative pisses me off because I'm like, hey, are you selling out your soul for clicks and views? Is that what you're doing? Or are you literally getting trapped in that weird psychology people have, which I hate, which is like, I guess this is just what everyone does. I don't give a fuck if it's what everyone does. Walk out. Who cares about views and money? My, like, my safe like estimation of why she said that is for the same reason she said freshly 18. She just wanted the medicine to go down easier with the audience. That's the thing. Maybe I'll give you that. When I, first, telling story. when I first heard that, I was like, oh, this girl be lying. But then... I saw follow ups she and said, follow ups. <laughs> Remember when she me. said her outfit was stained on her from that night? It's stained on her forever. She's so dirty that she can never even wash herself off. For sure. Which is, by the way, fan fiction. I won't lie to you that a part of her story did sound like a kind of a fiction of a, an assault story so there was something to <laughs> she that read the rape bible yeah and i agree that there definitely were some parts of that where i was like i don't know man but then again that's the thing i don't know and so i'm being very cautious and also i am older and also people do slide into my dms like you're not the only one and so i want to make sure that if they see this and they slide into my dms there's like at least one person that's being like okay let's hear it Let's hear it, girl. Let's go. Because like I'm open to being wrong. And to being wrong means you have to give her space to like tell her story in a less threatening way, right? And and George or Dream or whoever wants to reach out, obviously. Um, I just want to give that space to people because that's you yeah, know. I, I, yeah, I just personally think it's a safe assumption, especially based off all the other information. But we can for move sure. on. For sure. Um, so um Okay, so um, at 123.28 um, in your video, you critique me for not listening to the parties involved. And so how, okay, I think we already went over we did, that. We did go over that. Like the listening thing. Um, this Sapnap George throwing on the bus. Oh, this was an interesting one. So about like an hour 46 in. Um, throughout your whole video, like I guess this is your thing to like preach empathy and to understand both sides, be nuanced, I guess. Mm -mm. Um. But then you tell George to just get over it when he's falsely accused. Mm. And I bring up and and you uh, bring up the point and I, I bring up the point that anytime this guy ever wants to interact with a girl again, they will be able to look up his name and immediately see he's been accused of sexual assault. And you even bring up Chris Brown as your example here, which is someone who got like uh, accused and can still maintain his career. So therefore, George won't have a problem maintaining his career because Chris Brown still has a career, which I mean. This is just like a complete non-comparison. George not found a Chris Brown. How is that comparable at all? And plus, yeah. you know, it's Chris Brown's reputation has been heavily damaged by his accusations. It's like I mean, common knowledge a, to make a joke about him yeah. beating Rihanna. Yeah, I mean, like as it should, right? He like beat Rihanna, the, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying even more. That's like an insane well, comparison because, to draw to George not found. Well, okay, but, so like, I- This example kind of- was like the worst. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I need to clarify this because like this is very important for my brain. I do not make one-to-one -one comparisons. I, everything is a spectrum to me. So what I was comparing in that moment was not George to literally Chris Brown. It was to the fact that if Chris Brown has pictures of Rihanna getting fuck, can I say fuck on, on your stream? Of course. Have we even said that already? Okay. The fact that Chris Brown has pictures of Rihanna fucked up with bruises and people still work with him and are friends with him, which is like maybe domestic abusers aren't always domestic oh, because abusers. Because he's like an A.S. class celebrity with a bunch of power. That's probably why. Okay. You, you know? say that. Like, but in order for him to maintain that power. Pe okay. But again, watch my logic. In order for him to maintain that power, people would have to consent to allowing abuser in their like arena, right? Because Chris Brown had an opportunity to never come back. And he still to this day complains that he's never back where he was because people say this about him. Now, okay, then George not found, okay, because um, what the argument was is like people's careers or their lives get ruined. So Britney's brain thinks your life getting ruined is like sent to jail for 40 years for something you didn't do, right? That's fucked up. That means you have no relationship with society. But George Not Found isn't getting locked up. He has access, status. He literally has resources. Okay, he's and not locked up. Can we agree? Can we come to the common ground that his reputation will forever be heavily damaged? Well, what do you, in what capacity do you mean that? I don't think of my search up the guy's name, the Wikipedia article he always has will always have allegations, sexual assault. I think that heavily hurts someone's reputation for the rest of their life. 
I agree that it is going to impact him in some capacity, yes. I'm not sure to what degree, though, and I think that's probably what we're arguing, is it will impact him. Everything, good or bad, will impact somebody. I'm not sure to what degree. Yeah, I'm just I'm just curious, though, because like you give so much empathy and understanding to Katie, but then when George comes around, you say, get over it well, when keep, he's falsely accused. Like, that was a crazy line you said. You got For admit. sure. Keep in mind, my first three videos were about George, and my fourth video was about Katie. So, cause the, so the first three videos I made, I'm purely on George's side, Katie's a bitch, all that stuff. And then I was like, okay, let's kind of hone it in. Let's try to make this more empathy. So the fourth video I made about them was sp specifically about Katie. It was about understanding Fair, Katie's but still it doesn't like defend, like, like but just get over Well, it. okay, so. Like, backtrack that? I mean, how yeah, do you defend yeah. that? So, okay, this is how, this is what I mean. I mean, not George, a consciousness should just get over it. George, the consciousness should go through therapy and whatever he needs for his support system and reach out to people in his life and move through this process. But George himself will be able to move on from this, meaning he won't need to crucify Katie. He won't need to like, oh, Katie's a bitch and she should go to jail. He'll be able to say, okay, you did a bad thing. We all agree. Let's move on. I have a feeling George is the kind of person, he seems to have the maturity to move on, which is by the way, incredible. I th I think very highly of George. That's why I'm giving him this amount of like expectation. Now, maybe that's wrong. I don't mean to put that on him, right? Obviously. But I think so highly of George and the way that he's responded to everything. I think he would genuinely just move on if they could clear the air. I, I do. I think Katie has less of a chance of admitting fault or misper misperception if she feels like the there's going to be unjust consequences. I think if George was actually the reason like her and George had the conversation I think George could move on and Katie would say sorry and this would genuinely be like a really gro big growth moment for for society yeah th that would th okay yeah that would be great but I guess it's just you know just push back on the main idea sure it seems like you have low empathy in that statement but apparently well, you have and also, empathy in the other statements that just well, get over it and like I mean we just saw a dream like I was at college mm -hmm. and just random like people I would talk to they would immediately say like I would I don't know, dream would come up in a conversation like once in a blue moon. And they would say, oh, isn't that guy like a pedophile groomer? For I'm sure. Like, Whoa. Yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. This is just this guy's reputation with like the average yeah. Joe. Um, no, and no, no, I'm no. A well, average Joe, that's the problem, right? Because well, no you Okay, well, you yeah, get yeah, what yeah. I mean. It's still I agree, to a lot of people. I agree, I agree. To a lot I of people, agree. that's just what he's, that's what he's written off as. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, I believe a similar thing might happen to George. I agree. I 100% would be very frustrated if this was, it's, it's first, it's frustrating. I'm not in any way saying it's not, I meant to, I meant it more like in a philosophy sense, like in a after the math sense, like in the most mature sense, this is what adults would do. But obviously the anger and the hurt and the pain, like I know it's so real. I dealt with it for so many years myself, but once you let go of it and you move on and you accept like, this is life, there's so much more to life than holding on to this anger. But I understand it's a process. Like George has the right to be angry. If George came out making a, I hate Katie video, like fair, right? Do I think it's where I would like to see him end up? No, because obviously we want to promote healing. Now empathy, and I will tell this for your audience, especially not everybody has empathy for all people. So I have, a sh I am not perfect. Nobody is. And so I won't be able to be empathetic with all people. But I think as a person who's been falsely accused, I, out of all people should know how George feels. And I'm a victim of sexual assault or a grape, however you want to phrase it. And I know that for myself, healing was a part of it. Therapy, philosophy, and making sure you understand that like, this is life. Like being a human is a very interesting and dangerous thing. And we want a perfect world, but we don't live in that perfect world. And I just don't want to contribute to the best of my ability, though I know I will, to that in perfect world, right? I'm not saying you're a bad person, by the way. I think you're probably a very good person. I just think we disagree on maybe how we come to conclusions. Yeah, I always ask for verbal consent. You don't have to worry about me. Yeah, I'm I, great. I will end up on the news. You won't see me. Great. All right, though. I yeah, I think we covered that. Okay, last point. And if you have any questions, you could do that after this. Okay, this is the last thing I got ready for yep. you. Mm -hmm. So, towards the end of your video, you say that George apologized for touching Katie's tits without her consent. Mm -hmm. Can you show me where he said that? Because from everything I've seen, George apologized for Katie's feelings and if she feels bad about the interaction, but then defended himself in regards to touching her, explaining how he was given signs and nonverbal consent to touch her. Hence the reason why he explained at the end of his first response that it's okay if she regrets that night, but it's not fair to blame him for regretting the experience. Yeah. So I think there's just a, a facts wrong on your end unless you have some new information you want to give to me. Right. Right. Now, I will say, I do not know if he literally touched her boobs. Nobody knows. 
Well, that. you said that he apologized for touching her tits without right. consent. That's just not true. I swear I was putting quotation marks up when I said that. Maybe not, but that's what I, that's, see the I have problem. the timestamp. We okay. can look at the timestamp. Even if I didn't, that's what I meant. Like, that's what I'm doing in my stream. I'm like, you know, he touched her tits or whatever. Like, the, I'm saying we don't know, but I'm trying to add context to what Katie put in. So obviously I know that. So for clarification, I know we do not know if he touched her boobs. That, we do not know that. He, well, we only know Katie said that, but we, George did not confirm it. What George did confirm and what I remember hearing, so I could be wrong, is that George said, I did slip my hand up Katie's shirt. I did touch her. I won't go into details. I'll let her decide that. And so that there's like a, maybe I misheard that, but I felt like, okay, that's an insinuation of maybe something more happened or maybe it was just her stomach or maybe it was something else, but I'll let George and Katie decide how to mutually tell that story. So now Katie came out with more details. I don't know if she's telling the truth, of obviously, um, but George did say that I'll let, like, I'll let Katie kind of tell the details of what happened. And so we're assuming that's what Katie did. What do you think about that? Um, assuming the details of Katie and what? Like George said, we'll let Katie tell the details if she wants. And so when Katie came out and said um, yeah. that he touched her boob, doesn't that kind of infer? We don't know that, but doesn't that kind of mean that that's what happened? Or no, do we, should we? I mean, yeah, I have no, I have no problem saying, uh, yeah, I say my video. Yeah, George. I have yeah. no problem in saying admitting that George touched her tits, but oh. I just still don't care. I don't think that changes much. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just think that that's where the miscommunication probably came up, right? And I also do believe in the validity of asexuality. Not and the that... miscommunication with you? No. Or oh. Katie George? Are you talking about the quotes thing still? And saying that he apologized for touching her without her consent? Or yeah, he did. A... George and Katie. Are you saying you didn't see him apologize or that he said he's very sorry to Katie? I think I'm confused. I'm so sorry. Okay, so like the point is that he's never apologized for touching her without her consent. He apologized for her feelings and if she feels bad and regrets the night. That's well, that's obviously the two very different things. Yeah, but to George, oh my God, like he would be a monster if he wasn't doing both, right? He's saying, I'm sorry that I made you feel that way. I, I wouldn't have done that if I thought it was wrong. Like Obviously, he's saying like, I apologize. It doesn't, does it matter? Like, it's not that he needs to apologize for literally touching her. It's apologizing for not reading the situation correct, right? Like, same thing. Well, the problem of. is that he pushed back exactly on that fact, too. Oh. He pushed back on the fact that he didn't do this without asking to let her consent. He felt like it was justified for the nonverbal consent. He never apologized oh. for saying, Okay, like, yeah, I can agree. Have. I mean, I can agree to that. I think ultimately it's kind of the, okay, I can agree to that. So he apologized for his feelings. But I, I do think that he, within reason, thought he had verb, uh, nonverbal consent, right? I agree with that as well. I just think that he read the room wrong because it, it and that happens. That's the that's the problem with nonverbal consent. I Trust me, I've done this myself where you think the guy is into you and you go in for a kiss and he rejects you or you go in for a kiss and she's like, oh my God, no. And I'm like, fuck, how did I misread it? And it's because we were flirting, but Rape. the flirting, well, it's the flirting mistake, right? <laughs> flirting isn't sexual necessarily. Lots of people flirt with you and don't want to be with you. And I think that's something that people don't understand is like lots of people will flirt with you and not actually be into you. On Katie's logic, a lot of people are going to be getting accused of sexual assault soon if everybody went off of her book. Well, but, you know, yeah. yeah, I think ultimately, like, look, people lie, and I recommend not doing that, right? I never lie about people, right? That's very important to me. But sometimes, you know, our perception of the truth can feel really real, and it might not be as real as we think it is. And I think that's why I want to promote, like, therapy and philosophy to make sure we know what we're experiencing. You know, it's like a conservative that thinks all trans people are groomers. It's like that's obviously not happening, but that's their perspective. So you have to either get them to think differently or not be neighbors with them. You know, it's like it's hard to explain to people that that perspective isn't objective. But, you know, it's their perception. So what are you going to do? It's like people who believe in God. It's like, well, that's not real. But it could be real. But maybe it's, you know, it's very difficult to ask people to agree with you on reality, right? Yeah. Well, Brittany, that's all I got for you, unless you got something you want to ask me. No, I just want to say thank you for reaching out. You did really well, and you were very concise, and I appreciate that so much. And yeah, props for you reaching out. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks for having me. All right. Have a good yeah. one. Bye. All right. That was so good. He was really lovely. I'm so glad. Oh, that was so nice. Whew. Guys, I was nervous. He was so sweet, though. Nah, he was nice. That was really sweet. And, you know, honestly, I took a ibuprofen and my headache kind of went away. But now it's it's a little bit back. He was so good. That was really, really nice. That was really, really great. We did it. We did it. Yes, this was a very good convert. He was very lovely. I'm really, I love that he took notes. I took notes too, but mine are mostly doodles. 
<laughs> show us Indiana. Raiders, Indiana's in the other room, Raiders. I can't show you Indiana. That was really nice, okay? Agree to disagree. <laughs> it's interesting to see how people come to conclusions. Um, and I'm glad we could connect. Yeah, that was good. Any last thoughts from anybody? Any thoughts? I'm definitely going to get off stream because I don't want my headache to come back. Um, does anybody have any thoughts? Anything? Haley says, I appreciate how that concluded. Um, he is a baby boy in the nicest way. We mean that in the nicest way and has a lot of growing to do, but you worked with him beautifully. I think he did really well too. I think he, he was really patient with our miscommunications, like our deviations and communications, you know, he did a really good job. Re uh, reading said he did, um, he did a, oh, reading is air. Oh, I love that username. He did a very good job of communicating when he didn't understand something. Some people really struggle with that. Their pride won't allow it. He did so good. That was great. That was great. You know what I mean? Dun, 